Have you ever tried looking up a recipe or a tutorial and after two minutes pass, you find yourself needlessly scrolling through this entire blog just to find the section that pertains to what you Googled? Like it says, how to make authentic butter beer at the top, but all you're doing is reading through seemingly endless ads and an account of the author's Sunday brunch date with their friend that inspired their epiphany to make butter beer. And you're like, why is the internet like this? Did you find what you needed? Eventually. My name is Satchel Drakes and I make things for a living. I was a host with Forbes for their games and sciences department, a YouTuber on the executive board of the Internet Creators Guild with Hank Green, and I've been fortunate enough to pursue my dream of being a designer, a filmmaker, and an online creator. Uh, and it's put me in a position of working with teams that were from childhood instrumental in forming my imagination. Driving great joy from being visually oriented and executing photography-centered things, it should come naturally to want to share ways to get the crispest image. But in truth, what's been the most invaluable centerpiece to all of these cosmetic components is empathy for the viewer. Uh, I feel empathy is the driving force of communicating well because you begin everything in the shoes of the people you're talking to. If you don't have that, you don't have your audience. And really no one is going to make you care about them. But if you do, uh, it's hard for people to not take notice. Uh, the algorithm for whatever platform you're presently on is constantly changing and doesn't care about you. Uh, it cares about getting the highest CPM for a tech monopoly's bottom line. Uh, that isn't really top secret knowledge. And you can do your best to play ball with the cat and mouse chase, uh, but humans are platform agnostic and data is cold in a way that people are not. Uh, if the people on the receiving end care about you, uh, they'll follow you to any platform. And this is fairly evidenced in traditional media. Uh, it's the difference between having a viral video and a communal channel. There's only one thing algorithms across the board reward uh, that's worth caring about anyway, and that's viewer retention, uh, which is how long someone constantly watches something. So don't make them jump around or even have to touch the play bar. Uh, try in your outline to develop cadence around the cards that will uh, help people know where they are. Uh, overlays with chapter markers, even adding an hourglass countdown would be pretty rad. At some point, I learned that we never lose out by making what we have to share painstakingly clear to the viewer. Uh, unless we're telling a poetic story or conveying fine art in some intentionally indirect way, relentlessly scrutinizing the parts of your script that meander or may cause someone to tap their foot tends to be a net positive. We have three opportunities to do it. and. Really, all three are, are worth it. It's before, during, and after. So uh, before with a chapter marker or a preface, during in the actual explanation, and after in a conclusion where we can remind people why we've arranged our video essay the way that we've arranged it. If you like deeper reading material, William Strunk and A.B. White's The Elements of Style is a skinny book that will, you know, help you out a lot. And here's the incentive. If you're straightforward about your content, you can be straightforward about asking for likes, subscribes, and bell clicks, and people will take you on it for two reasons. One, you gave them what they needed up front, which people like, and two, you gave them what they needed up front, so you have their attention and time to ask for favors. I'd like to talk about the media kit for just a second. So that's the splash intro, the logos, the transitions, the credits. Uh, there's a beauty in the restraint required to know you have something strong. Uh, there's a strength in keeping intro and splash stuff to a minimum uh, if you're not making a Saturday morning cartoon type show. Uh, a general principle I use to keep in check is 
to let the concise messaging of what you're communicating be what you show off more than an exhaustive media kit. For example, let's take a look at this anonymized Photoshop tutorial. Okay, so for the sake of this exercise, I wanted to find a video tutorial on how to duplicate layers in Photoshop. And I chose this on purpose. Essentially, there's only two ways to do this, and it takes up two seconds to do either one, which is either to select the layer that you want and press Command J, or to right click the layer and select Duplicate Layer. What's really important isn't the Photoshop part, it's the fact that it takes two seconds. Already, this video is four minutes and 23 seconds. So let's dive into what's going on here. So in the beginning, we have this intro that is asking you to go other places, which you came to this video for something very specific. The user talks for a bit. They talk some more. It isn't until about around here that one minute and 25 seconds in is where it actually shows you what to do where you just quickly right clicked. That means up until then, this was all useless information to the person who landed on this video looking for something specific. Uh, we don't need, don't do this. <laughs> so here's the YouTube grid as it stands. Here's all the space that your work can sort of occupy. So here's the beloved grid that we see every day. I just wanna break that down to the essentialist sort of elements here. Uh, and then I wanna kind of show you, as far as design goes, I find it's important to lean into color theory to both get attention, uh, but also to let your people know where you are. For YouTube, color blocking is your best friend. Neon colors stick out, coordinate shows with specific colors and typefaces, uh, play to the environment that you're in. Uh, you could call this gaming the system, but I call it using your eyes. This is the playground everyone's in, and I'm not saying make your thumbnail something problematic with a caps lock title. So these are four accessible $0 means of making something that people can gather around. These are the things that I find valuable. Uh, they're not as tantalizing as buying a lens. I've bought too many lenses and none of them come before knowing your people. Uh, I don't naturally lean into confidence and I'm very inclined towards overwhelming people with caveats such as take this with an eighth of a grain of salt, or this might not be your use case per se, and so on. And I think I'm gonna leave that discernment on you to decide what should be taken and what should be left. Uh, if you check out my YouTube channel, you'll likely find that I've failed to follow each one of these tenants at least once, and that's the point. I tinkered and I landed here, and you will tinker and land exactly where it makes sense for you. Um, those are my caveats, that's my permission. Go out there and be merry. Subscribe for more episodes of YouTube Masters.